Okay, let's take a look at emitted values and see how we can go about that. Um, in this example, I'm going to show you how to load emitted values into registers. Emitted values are those that are not necessarily moved from the memory, but they are actually uh, made inside the CPU or generated inside the CPU. This is an important thing to remember because actually I'll hold on to that and I'll show you why in a minute. But let's say I want to move a value to a register. I simply uh, use the move instruction. I type the register number and then uh, the hashtag to say this is an immediate. And then this will be the immediate value of three. That's uh, decimal three. You can also move uh, values in X. And to do that, you type zero X before the number, and that will allow you to write a hex value. So let's say I want to throw the hex value of F into R1. I can also move data using binary, uh, hashtag E for binary, and let's say 1010. Let's compile and download and see these values in our registers. Okay, so I'm going to step through it. Uh, so R0, here we go. This is my R0. It contains the value of 3. Step to the next one. R1 contains F. Here's my F1. And then I'm moving binary, basically binary A, or binary 1010, that's a 10. So that's an A. Here's my A into R2. Uh, as you know, you can actually change how you look at these and take a look at them in binary, uh, hex, and Decimal, hexadecimal, three, F is 50, A is 10, and so on. Now let's take a look at other values. Let's say I want to move the value of uh, 1021. Move R3. I want to move the immediate value of uh, 1021. It's an immediate value, sorry, 1021. Like 1021. Can I do that? in assembly and no i can't i got an error here that says so and so uh error invalid constant bigger invalid constant 3fd after fix up compilation stopped and this brings me back to what i meant earlier uh immediate value r is a value that's generated within the cpu so the translation of this error is, A, the CPU can generate this value using the resources that it has on the chip. This is a very important thing to keep in mind. I will show you where this is coming from. And to explain that to you, I'm going to show you uh, the data format instruction in assembly. And I'll try to give you also an example in decimal to Expand a little bit further. So uh, let me show you this slide right here. Okay, so data format, uh, data format instructions, data or data processing instruction, they have this format. Uh, we're not going to dive into each of these, or all of them right now. Uh, but all you need to know is that for data processing, the first 12 bits. So this is bit number zero, bit number one, two, three, four, etc. Bit number 10, 11, 12, that's how you read them. 12, 13, all the way to bit number 31. So this is a 32-bit width wide instruction. There's different types of instructions, but let's just focus on the data processing. It shows me that the second operand uh, basically is 12 bits. So I have 12 bits to produce a value that I can put or I can move as an immediate value for this kind of instruction. Um, so uh, then you have your destination register and your source uh, first register, but we're not going to dive into that. So uh, I have 12 bits. So how do I represent numbers using 12 bits? Well, uh, quickly put, I, can, I have two ways. I can either use all of them to represent the values using 12 bits as you do in binary, or you can uh, use a different scenario. 
and let me show you an example. So let me, I'm just gonna type it here because it probably will make it easier. So assume I have, and I'm gonna give you a, an example in decimal. Let's say I have three digits, one, two, three. I have three digits to represent a number in decimal. What is the maximum number I can get? Well, if you tell me, okay, if I have three digits, then I can do nine, nine, nine. And then the maximum value that I can put in this number is 999. The smallest one would be, uh, you guessed it, will be 000. So this range goes from 000 to 999. Um, you can represent every possible natural number between 000 and 999 with the combination of three digits. But the range is very small. I can't go more than 999. I'm limited. So I would tell you, well, I have an idea. Why don't we have the most significant two digits, for example, represent a value, and then this, the last digit will represent how many zeros that value has. So it becomes, if you have, if you have 999, nine, nine, this will be equivalent to having 99, and then you have nine zeros next to it. So this is 99 billion, right? So now you can represent large values using this system. Another example of that would be having 8, 3, 3. And this will be equivalent to having 83 followed by three zeros. So that's 83,000. Now, the good part of this is that you can represent a larger number using only three digits, right? As you can see here, I can represent actually 99 billion. The downside to this is that you cannot represent every possible scenario. You can't represent certain numbers. So for example, if I want to represent 99 million and one, I won't be able to do that. Like how would you write 99 million and one? You would have to have 99 here and then this digit will have to tell you how many zeros to represent the million, but then you can't represent the one. So you cannot generate that 99 million and one, or you actually you can't generate any 99 and one anything, right? Because this value here is going to dictate how many zeros. So if the most significant two digits are 99, the remaining digits will just represent how many zeros, right? Maybe you can do then nine one, and then that could be, 91, right? If you put a zero here, then this number will be 91 and zero zeros. Or you can put a one here and this become 910. Or you can put a two here and this becomes 9,100 and so on. But you can't have a one in this location, right? You just can't. Um, so using the system, some of the numbers, cannot be represented. Actually, let me just uh, just quickly go back and correct something. If you have zero, then this will be 99. So you can't you can represent 91, um, but maybe you cannot represent 912 or 913 because you'll still have to have, you have a nine to, in the most significant bit, and this will be the 10th uh, digit, and then this will be the ones digit. And if you put a two here, then you will get 9100 but you can't get, for example, 912 using this notation, right? Because even if this is a zero, uh, you'd still get 991. If this is a one, you get 90, 91, uh, nine, actually 910. And this is a, if this is a two, then you get 9100 9, and so on. So in a similar manner, uh, the values in these registers, when you have a data processing instruction, like I showed you a second ago, uh, the immediate value will be generated using these 12 bits, but it's not a pure 12 bits uh, combination. It's not, just, it's not just like, okay, give me a combination of 12 bits and that will be the value. Instead, in ARM, we're going to use eight bits to generate some immediate value. 
and then we're going to use four bits out of those 12 to generate a rotation amount basically how many times would we multiply uh, the number right if you if you rotate right you're doing some sort of uh, multiplication and then that value will also be multiplied by two and then you will get the final number so uh, in this example let's say here i have in my 12 bits i have one 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 zero one for my lowest eight bits and then the upper eight bits are zero or one zero one zero so basically uh here i have a five right and then this number is uh, some value so how do i get the result for that well this rotation amount is multiplied by two so i'm going to take this number right i'm going to take this number and rotate it right 10 times so if i take this value and i rotate it 10 times in a 32-bit uh, field uh, let me see if i can do this here for you guys so starting with this this is my original number right so this is my uh my first step so on the next step so assuming these will those will fit here my 8-bit value so i will rotate it one time and then basically this one will go here and then this becomes um let me try a little bit difficult to do that um without using pen and paper so uh it will go like this So that one is rotated right and shifted into this most significant digit. And then the remaining bits here are all zeros, by the way. And then we rotate it one more time. If I can make it smaller, here we go. So we, re re we rotate that one more time. And obviously then I will have the second one coming up here dropping out from here and then i'm inserting another zero here okay and then i keep doing so until the number of um rotations is completed so this will drop out of here it will come here and then i insert a zero here and eventually once all these numbers are done I, you know when i when i rotate 10 times i will generate my number so whatever that value is, it will be my immediate value. So I know this is a little bit out of the scope of just coding in ARM assembly, but I wanted to show you why certain combinations or certain immediate values cannot be generated directly uh, or on the chip and being put into the registers right away. So is there a way then that we can get those numbers in a different way and the answer is yes, we can sort of cheat and then use the load instruction. Now, okay, so let me show you a trick here. So if you do LDR comma, so if you do the same thing, actually, if you do LDR, let's say R3 with the immediate value 1021, the same thing is going to happen, it's going to fail. So that's not going to work. That didn't help us. Uh, another way, so a, a trick here is you can probably um, put the equal sign to make it point to a certain location. Um, so let me try one more time. Uh, still giving me a bad instruction at the LDR. And actually, this is supposed to fail too. Well, it failed before we did the LDR. So let me just take this out. And again, this is going to fail. So load cannot generate the value as well but an ldr instruction can make a register point to a location in memory so we can technically make it point to this location and then that will make that register uh, a pointer so to say that points into that address and then that's the value that we not we need to get so let me download it to the board and i'll show you that the value is generated so here if we step through these instructions 
So we see that R3 now contains 1021, which is what we need it. Uh, this is a quick way to kind of over, overcome this limitation. Another way to do this is actually to declare in my data section, I can declare a value. So let's say J J is word, and that value is my one. And then I make my pointer pointing to that location of J, but now it's going to store, store the location of J. And then I want to load a word from that location into the register. So that would be all the R, R3. Um, don't worry too much about the notation here. Uh, simply I'm telling it to uh, point to the variable J that I just declared. It will be in some location in memory, and then I'm going to load a word from that location into R3. So it's going to load the value of 1021 from that location into R3. So if I do that, notice here now, after I execute this LDR, uh, the value of R3 is going to change. Uh, let me go back to hex here. It's going to change because it's going to reflect the address of J. Right, um, and then that's at some location in memory. And then now I'm going to load a word from that location into R3, and then I got my 10, uh, 1021 back. Go back to decimal, correct. Uh, now, again, we're getting a little bit away from the topic, but uh, let me start from the top. And I want to show you that uh, the location of J was this value. So if I go to memory and I search for that address, that's where J is sitting in memory. And this is 3FD is my 1021. So now if I go one step further, that is my 3FD value that was moved from memory into my R3. So anyway, I just wanted to show you a, a quick understanding of how immediate values are generated in the ARM architecture. Uh, this topic is a little bit uh, longer than what I, uh, what I included in, in this lecture or video. And uh, I showed you a couple of examples, a quick way to kind of overcome this limitation. And I hope that you learned uh, from this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.